Chapter 6, Jine. Oh, how do you know my name? Jine clearly alerted that the boy in front of her knew her name. She took a closer look. A young child with a lighter pale skin complexion and black spiky hair reaching to the middle of his back. Short bangs framing his forehead. Pulling a brown fur in front of him to cover himself up. From the save database of the newborns an image of a baby, just turning three years old at the destruction overlapped with the young boy in front of her. Ah, a him. This, I saw you walk past my incubator, and a man with a scar on his cheek was calling your name. Broly tried to cover his slip up with an excuse he felt satisfied with. Well, rather that was the only he came up with. Jine thinking for a while before she responded fairly absent-minded. Yes, I am Jine. The man you saw was my husband Bardock, probably thinking of her husband and her two sons, before she snapped out of it, bringing back her focus to the child in front of her. And you are Broly, right? How come you know that? Clearly surprised, standing there with his dumbfounded face. Well, we have the information of every child from before the destruction. We also have information of every scion still out on the mission that day. But more of that later, we need to get going. Her face becoming more serious as she was ordering the two scions behind her. Now Broly was puzzled. She looked like her counterpart in the series, but now seeing her serious look, one could only imagine how serious the situation is. But since when is she someone who has such a commanding aura around her? Thinking to this point, he realized how the two other scions stood there with a step behind her, indicating the amount of respect they had for her. Broly could feel that they were not weak either, rather they were significantly stronger than even the so-called elites he met before. Jine as well, not nearly as strong as them, but clearly a cut above elite-class scions. Part of that must be the high gravity, and considering the wolves, it is clear that they have to train to survive on this planet. Thinking it would be nice to get some information, he followed them outside, where he was greeted by another group of six scions. Judging by the atmosphere around them, they were clearly battle-hardened. Scions were usually battle-hardened, but those were without any doubt experts. Their stance, the distance between the other group members, their angle of vision. Undoubtedly, if he tried to attack one of them, he would be completely at their mercy. Coupled with the lack of aura, they gave Broly a dangerous feeling. Where are we going? Unknowingly, Broly lowered his voice as he sensed the mood. To our headquarters, just outside the forest. Don't worry, we will get you out of here. It is only an hour away from here, if we move fast. Come, let's go. As she finished. She sped up, the other group already leading Broly and Jine towards their headquarters. Not only those three, but those six as well. Just how many have survived the destruction, and why were they never seen again in the story? How come they weren't even mentioned by the Kais? Maybe they died? Considering how serious they are, it looks like they have powerful enemies. But with time, they should have been able to adapt and become strong enough to take over this place. Perhaps they couldn't leave? Leaving a planet is after all not only about strength. A Super Scion would have a fair chance to leave, but how could a Super Scion just emerge out of nowhere? And training to become one is just too difficult. It is said that the gentler a Scion is, the more S cells they have, making it easier for them to turn into one. With an emotional trigger and enough S cells you could turn into a Super Scion. Other ways to increase your S cells was to plainly increase your battle power, and at a high enough power level, you wouldn't even need a trigger. Well this is how it is described in the story, can't assume they got it all right, but it matches with some theories I have. Still that doesn't explain why King Kai said nothing. As Broly was thinking this, they all sped through the forest, without incident. As they came closer, Broly saw a gigantic steel wall, separating the forest with what appears to be a city. As they flew towards the queue at the entrance. Finally, we are back. Thankfully we didn't meet any of the CE. The group visibly relaxed as their tense face were showing smiles. Hmm, what is the C? Better catch up with the situation on this planet, Broly thought. Before they could relish in their happiness. Multiple figures appeared in front of them, cutting in line. Oh, hello science, what a lovely day to have a walk at dawn. What are you doing, Bates? Shouted the leader of the six Scion squad. My, my, don't be so worked up. We just finished our mission, and now line up to get back in. Got a problem with that? Responded a man of average height with a sneer on his face. He had reddish skin and no hair. He looked like he was made from stone. Now be good science and stand at the back. You. To be talked down on in public was not something a scion could take lying down. Just before they were starting to pounce at them, Jine took a step forward. It's your turn. If you could, please. You certainly don't want to hold up the line, right? You should know how dangerous it is to artificially jam up the entrance. Maybe you have already forgotten the new law? Ah, uh, of course not. We were just having a friendly joke. Please don't take it seriously, Miss Jine. Have a nice day. With a sour face, he made his way into the city. What was that all about? Who was that? Broly asked, he himself got worked up, as he just wanted to punch his stupid face. I don't worry about him for now. Let's just go back. Thanks for again for all the comments and support. Chapter 7, CE. As they entered the city, 
they were greeted with a bustling city. Most of the races seen were emitting strong key, but those who gave Broly a sense of danger were those who didn't emit anything. This was surprising since in the series, it was implied that few species except for the Earthlings had a technique to conceal or amplify their key. Most would have another transformation which boosts their key, but to hide their key should be near impossible since most beings don't even have the ability to sense key. It became clearer as they went deeper into the city that this city is not ruled by Scions. The Scions didn't really seem to have a high status in society either, except for the occasional glance from other warriors, they were mostly ignored by the common people. Soon they arrived at their so-called headquarters. The entrance hall was large, a few men were discussing something at the sides, seemingly preparing to move out for a mission. Straight ahead was an elevator with a staircase on the right side. While they were waiting for the elevator to arrive, Jine said to Broly that she was going to show him something, to explain the current peril they were in. The hunter squad and the guide already left, evidently uninterested in the upcoming conversation, and being somewhat exited to leave for some new mission. Standing in the elevator, she took a card out and put it into a slid right next to the button panel. Blinking green as a new button at the bottom appeared, apparently going into their secret basement. As they were walking out the elevator and along the corridor, Jine began talking. You are probably wondering what I'm going to show you and why. You see, the city, the people, even though there are disagreements, maybe even hatred between our races, are trying our best to survive. Our race is no different. They are dangerous. A race that is powerful enough to force so many races to work together. Yes, the CEs are unimaginable strong. The strongest in this city, our city lord had a rough time against these creatures, even though he has a power level of 50 million. But their strength is not the only thing frightening about them. So, the strongest is above 50 million. With my current strength I'm no match for him, but I will bridge this gap soon. He, the voice to his side, dragged him back to reality before he could further indulge in his fantasies. It is the ability to suck away your life force. With every physical exchange they get stronger, until you end up too exhausted. There is also their troublesome poison, which prevents you from natural healing. Without external help, it is almost impossible to heal your wounds. That is why the city lord is still recuperating. But we got have a few years to spare because of that. Gas Broly was shocked by this information. Even if their strength is not that impressive in the whole scheme of things, it is still scary to have an opponent who can suck up your life force. What are ways to heal your life force? They probably don't have any sins of beans, and even with that it may not even cut it. No wonder all the people living here have such a high control of key. As they entered another long corridor, they saw an old short man with glasses hunching over what seemed to be a high-tech computer. Just behind the computer desk was a glass wall, and behind it, a completely black humanoid being. It looked like it was born straight out of the darkness. It didn't have any facial expression, and its skin seemed to suck up the light around its near periphery. It seemed to fade for a moment before solidifying again, as if it was blinking in and out of existing. As Broly looked at the creature, he became agitated. Few seconds passed before regaining his composure. It is starving to death said the man without looking up. This is how they starve and eventually die. They don't leave corpses, ashes, energy, or any other kind of remains. It is like they cease to exist or never existed in the first place. What are they feeding on? Just as the words came out, he realized that he already got the answer from Jine a moment ago. Life force. Letting the information sink in for a second, before Jine continued to explain. To be honest, you are the only one from the younger generation I brought down here. The reason I let you know all of this is because of your high power level. The reason why we could increase our strength in these past years to such a high level was because of a particular fruit, which will also help you fight against these creatures for a longer period of time. It supplements you with high quality life force and can thereby diminish part of the damage done to you. But even without its help, you manage to increase your strength by a lot it shows how much potential there is in you. In the future you will become an exceptional warrior, maybe even a super scion. Ahem. Jine could you tell me the name of the fruit and what it looks like? Sure thing. The locals call it the fruit of life. It is a light orange color with numerous prickly thorns on the rind. The fruit of might. But this is supposed to be non-canon. Well, I'm also a canon, but there was a movie scheduled. Does this mean every movie will take place in the future as well? Wait, did she say they used the fruit of might? Do you have more of those fruits? Seeing the panicked face of the little child, amused Jine. Haha. <laughs> yes, of course, and we can still get more in the future. You don't have to worry about not getting one anymore. It only needs time to grow and a lot of energy. But luckily you led us to energy crystals, so we can exchange one with the city. You mean those glowing crystals in my cave? That's right. In the center of the city the tree which bears the fruit of life needs massive amount of energy, and those energy crystals can provide just that. Non-warrior race tends to the tree. They grind the crystals and put them into soil. After a few days a fruit will ripe and be ready for plucking. The hunter squad, those who escorted us, are already on their way to mine them. By the way how many crystals do you need for one fruit? 
About two crystals and from what I could see, there were around 100 crystals littering about, some even bigger than normal ones. With a big smile on her face, obviously happy to strike it rich, she looked at Broly. So before we go and measure your exact battle capabilities, any more questions? Chapter 8. The Past What do you mean if I have questions? Of course, I have. What happened after the destruction? Where are we? What year do we even have? How many survived? Do we have a feud with the stone-looking people? Jine smacking her forehead. Right, you just came here. Oh boy, this will be an info dump. I should probably start at the beginning. Bardock told me that he sensed the presence of death since the moment Frisia called all scions back. He wanted to send Kakarot, our second son, to another planet, so he may live. We had to stay on planet Vegeta as we couldn't suppress our key back then. They would have found out immediately after we would have taken off. Bardock couldn't accept this outcome without a fight, so he went out to attack Frisia. I was only able to watch. I would have only made Bardock protect me, but but this way he may survive. He is strong after all. He was. Year 739. On the doomsday of planet Vegeta, Jine was looking at the horizon as a sun was approaching the planet, with tears filling her eyes. Kakarot, Raditz my boys, I really wanted to see you grow up. She knew that her end was imminent, even if she fled Frisia's army was just outside in space. With even the slightest chance that it would direct their attention to her son, she had to stay. Boom, a roaring explosion resounded as the sun entered the ground sending shockwaves across the planet before finally exploding. Jine escaped her inevitable death as she was swept into a rift by the explosion. For a second, she entered a place full of colorful clouds before she could have a look around. She exited through another rift. Still propelled by the explosion, she flew over a lake like a skipping stone before a boulder stopped her in her flight. Boom boom asterisk a few other explosions could be heard in the distance. As the dust settled, Jine got up, heavily injured, and looked around just to see other scions like herself in the near vicinity. That son. I, I thought I was dead for sure. Frisia. It came from his ship. That bastard betrayed us. And what's with this absurd gravity? It is nearly crushing me. Few of the Scions still shivering at the thought of certain death. Scions are warmongers, but that doesn't mean they don't fear death. They were usually not at the receiving end. Suddenly, a pain filled scream attracted their attention. Arg. Frisia. Ah, he wants to kill us all. Take Revan Dash as they traced back the voice. They saw a Scion half of his body missing speaking these words. Although he couldn't finish his words, they knew what he wanted to say. His last words, a message to the survivors of their race, a call for vengeance. The moment the order to gather on their home planet came, a few sensitive ones had an unwilling feeling towards it, but most dismissed it as nonsense. But as they saw a sun coming straight at them, they knew they were abandoned. I knew we couldn't trust this demon, as if you could have known this. We were always loyal, there was no reason to go against us. Norisen. The moment our king had to bend his knees, we should have known that he just saw us as his little slaves. That you actually thought we had any value to this kind of demon, do have some brain cells missing? F asterisk CKU. You are still stranded here with us, you smart asterisk The conversation got heated as other scions chimed in. Clearly, they all were still furious and saddened about their loss and the betrayal and just wanted to vent it out on each other. Stop. This is not the time to have infights. We have to tend the wounds of the survivors and search the surroundings if there are any other more. Jine. You. Who do you think you are? You are just a low-class warrior. As Jine was an employee at the meat distribution and the wife of the most powerful low-class warrior, she was fairly known to most scions. She was instantly recognized by the man lashing out. Is this what you want? Frisia wanted to eradicate us, our husbands and our children. And now you are going at each other. What? Do you want to fulfill this demon's wish and kill the rest of us? Go and save our people. Dumbfounded by the small women and her commanding voice, he wanted to say something but couldn't find any faults with what she said. They all looked at each other before nodding and started to tend their wounds. Thereafter they all went out to search the vicinity, as the gravity was significantly higher, they couldn't find many, and few they found succumbed to their wounds, dying on this unknown planet, far away from home. That was six years ago. After that I and the other seven that day built a temporary base near the river and searched for others for a year. Our strength rapidly increased in that past year, and we increasingly found more of our people. At the end, we gathered 131 people. With that many people we had to put some order into it. Our people are not easy to deal with, especially when they can only think of battle. So, we formed a council for the different departments, and I was assigned to retrieve and receive them. Now I have a different role, but to that later. New people popped up every month, but the numbers dwindled the more time went on. Three years ago, we reached our highest number with 347. Since then, no one appeared anymore. Well, until you came. To be honest, we didn't have it bad. At the beginning, we were devastated. But our race was always tough and slowly many found their peace at the lake. 
For battle many sought out wildlife. We were content with what we had. Of course, we still have not forgotten our hatred. We are training as hard as we can to one day avenge our lost people. All went well until the CE emerged. Year 742 on an unknown planet. A young woman could be seen speeding through the forest in the early morning. She didn't take any breaks until she reached what appears to be a camp. As she headed to the biggest tent in the center, the guards just nodded before letting her in. Inside were five people who gave off a strong aura. They were discussing about possible routes they could take. She saluted before conveying the information they waited for all day. The CE have broken through the narrow pass. With their speed they will reach us before dawn. Chapter 9, Daz. We have lost too many to them. We have to leave the forest. Maybe we can find shelter in this encampment. A scout found yesterday. Maybe they know what we are going against. You want to run away with our tails between our legs? We can still fight them. They haven't gotten that much stronger. We have to nip them in the bud before we can't deal with them anymore. Besides, we don't know anything about those at the camp. We already lost more 26 of our people and they only get stronger. We have to seek alliance to the people of the encampment, even if they don't know what we are fighting. If we can make an alliance, our chances would still be higher than to confront them now. A stout man with typical spiky scion hair shouted right back at him. I agree with, Des, we can't lose any more people. Our numbers are few to begin with. Shortly after, a fierce discussion broke out, whether to leave or to fight. In the end, against their usual willingness for a direct face-off, they decided to leave for the encampment. Give out the order, we can't lose any more of our people, and if things are getting worse, we will have our last stand at the camp. As Daz said those words, the rest went out of the tent with solemn expressions. They knew that if those at the camp don't have any useful information, that they have no place to run to. Right after the order came out, around 300 scions heading south to the camp a scout seemingly saw. Most scions were unsatisfied with the order of retreat, but still followed it through. They had to work together. As they approached the camp, they weren't greeted with what they expected to be a lively camp, but destroyed buildings and bones scattering around. It was dead silent. Only a faint breath could be heard under a few rubbles. As they removed the debris, they saw a shriveled up body with reddish skin, which looks as if the person was hundreds of years old and was heavily malnourished. A whisper escaped his mouth as he looked at the people who unearthed him. Safe the fruits, B, bring it to Elpis. Before they could ask him any questions, his life force ran out. They seem to have encountered those things as well. Go search for these fruits. If he used his last words for this, it has to be of importance probably carefully stored away. Not wasting any time, they moved out to search. Daz went inside the center building to take a look. As he moved into a room, which looked like an office, he noticed a big map from the surroundings behind a desk. A location was marked on it, Elpis, a city further down south, outside the forest. A six hours march. It seems to be a gigantic city. Let's hope its defensive are as strong as it is big. After he stored the map, he saw two identical boxes in a slightly open drawer. As he pulled it out, an image of a fruit covered the top of the box. He opened it and was greeted with the fruit of might. Strangely attracted to it, he stored both away and went out. After he went out, he began to give out orders. I have found the fruits. Let's move out to the city. It is not far from here. The journey went smoothly, but Daz's sense of danger was growing as time went out. For hours in, without accident, until a black creature attacked them. With its three meters of height, it dashed towards Daz. Whoosh. It instantly appeared in front of him and struck out. Barely able to cross his arms, he blocked the incoming attack, pushing him several meters back as his feet sunk into the ground. The other scions as battle experienced they were, instantly shot out dozens of key blasts. Being stopped for just a second, it let out a deafening roar with his faceless head, as it seemed to ignore the others and went for Daz. With every hit his key shield was rapidly dwindling. The creature finally breaking through landed a solid hit on his chest, coughing up blood as he was sent flying for tens of meters before hitting a tree. He was feeling as if he aged for tens of years and was barely able to move. Hardly conscious, he saw the fruit next to him, rolling on the ground. His instinct told him to eat it, so he did. The next moment his muscles increased as if it was pumped up like a balloon. He felt his strength increasing at an alarming rate. His muscles shrank again. With his strength increased and his body energized, he jumped back on his feet and without to hesitate he shot out a key blast. Ah, take this. Swoosh a direct hit on the monster. As the dust settled, a humanoid creature was still standing, now with one of his arm missing, black liquid falling down his stump before disappearing midair. What are you waiting for? Kill it. Dash shouted as he shot out another blast. Dozens of key blasts followed as they flew towards the monster. After a minute of bombardment, not a sight could be seen of it. Come on move. We have to keep going before more of these are coming. As they were moving he felt his strength has increased tenfold, and even his life force which has been sucked out has not only been replenished but increased. Year 745 present time. 
That's how we discovered the uses of the fruit. After we went to the city, we had to give the remaining one to the city lord. He used it to plant a tree of life in the cinder. We got this building as our residence in return and live here ever since. Strangely, we were accepted fairly quick. They are probably thankful for every help they can get. Additionally, Daz powers were approaching a million at that time, and with him we rarely got into any troubles. But it wasn't enough to monopolize the tree with the city lord being here. But we will get privileged if we want to exchange one. There are also other benefits, and it is one of the reasons why we can sustain ourselves in this gigantic city. There are exceptions of course, Bates for example, who cut in line and was provoking us, belongs to the race who got wiped out in the camp. He hates us because we disrespected his people, as we took advantage after they got killed. But that was his dying wish. Ah. Uh, yes, but you know how we are which Sion would bother with a stranger. Well even if we did, he wouldn't believe our lies. We would have probably still taken everything even if he spoke out these words. Either way now it is already at the point of no return, as we already have a few confrontations that led to hostility. Anyway, after we settled down, we began to increase our strength as fast as possible, especially key control since we can't have physical contact with them. With the different races around, techniques for key control were widely spread. The city also gave us time to train. It has a powerful energy shield which makes it relatively safe. And the only good thing of the CE is that they need a few years of rest after a period of attacking. They just attacked half a year ago but luckily, they already retreated. There are also a few weaker ones who may be still around attacking every living being they come across but it seems you are quite lucky to not have encountered any. Apparently nine years ago they started appearing, causing mayor trouble around the planet before all the races gathered together to fight their common enemy, the CE. Well this is the situation with those things. Beside that everyone is searching for capable younglings of all races to train them to be the future pillars of all of us. So, obviously you are one of the top choices. For where we are, we suspect that we are at the boundary of the universe. Chapter 10. Power Level. The Boundary of the Universe? Broly pondering about a plan to visit Earth if it isn't too far away, or after he learns something similar to instant transmission. Yes, we are at a remote solar system to the very north. Ah, uh, so we are still in the northern galaxy? Yeah, but we are very far away. It would take us probably four years to the general area of our home planet. You mentioned your second son, Kakarot? How distant is the planet you send him to? From here it would be one additional year. Why do you ask? That's not far. Yadrit is also in that area. Maybe I can learn the techniques from them. No particular reason. I thought we could visit him in the future. Jine smiled at the idea. Yes, that would be nice, but for now let's stop chatting. We first measure your power level. You can all sense key, right? Why bother with measuring my power level? Broly inquired as they moved to the upper floors again. Of course, we can sense your key, but as all senses, it can be deceived and there are bound to be subjectively made errors. Despite being able to sense your key, we let a machine have an impartial look at you, so we can have a general idea of your strength. This is actually reasonable. Are they really science? As they talked, they went inside a room, where a circular device was placed in the center of the room. A tube was hanging right above it, being a perfect fit for the circle. This is their scanner, huh? It is quite big for scanning power levels though. A purple alien, which looked like the one Broly saw at his birth, fiddled with a panel, seemingly calibrating their scanner. Please stand in the circle, Broly. The tube will be lowered encasing you. All right, but why don't you just use scouters for this? because they are rather fragile. As even our weakest have a power level above 90,000, we got ourselves something that would last us some time. This should be able to measure power levels to the billions. In the billions? Even Perfect Cell wouldn't be able to break it without attacking. The purple alien butted in, getting impatient as they babbled on. All right, enough talking. If you could first try to restrain your key as much as possible, after I give you a thumbs up. Thereafter I will give you an okay sign, then show us your full power. Draw as much energy out of your body as you can. And I don't mean key blast. Don't want to repair it yet again? Restrain my power? But I already am. Broly thought to himself as he stepped inside the circle. The tube got lowered until it clicked. Well, I try my best, I guess. Beep. The scanner started working. After about 10 seconds, the purple alien raised his thumb and Broly tried to suppress his power even more as he usual does. As usual, he had difficulties to suppress it under a certain point. As his key is constantly rising, it gets more difficult to suppress it to the same level as the day he did it before. 20 seconds later he gave the okay sign and Broly went all out. His key started rapidly rising. Broly's key was manifesting itself on his body, like a green flame burning his skin, quickly growing in size, completely filling the tube with green light. Beep. As the tube opened again, he stepped out of the circle. So, how did I do? He felt awkward as the purple alien stared at him with an open mouth and Jine had a wide smile on her face, constantly nodding. Ha ha ha. You did well. You did well. Why you? Jinai thought he hadn't eaten any fruits yet. 
The purple alien still in disbelief, thinking Jine pulled a prank on him. He hasn't. Ha ha ha. The laughter only increased after the outburst of the alien. Cough cough. My power level? The alien answered him still in daze. Suppressed. 213.358. Full power. 1.231.327. I'm already in the millions? That is higher than I thought. I am already a match for second form Frisia, as expected from the legendary Super Scion's natural talent. Well, even if I had only relied on my talent alone, I would probably be around 500,000. Ha ha ha. Wait, till you eat a fruit of life. Most of our warriors have a tenfold increase. Almost everyone is already approaching the millions. But you are already at this level. Although the increase of your strength will be lower, since the fruit is more effective on weaker people, you will still be one of our strongest. Great. These are really good news. Come let's get you to Mr. Daz. Mr. Daz? You mean the one who is currently the strongest of us and manages the defenses? Why is he going to train me? Yes him. Since the recruitment of all races' talents start in two months, we have to train you as much as we can. You have a lot to learn, especially your key control. Even though your strength is massive, you won't be able to bring out 100% if no one teaches you. Oh by the way, what is it all about this recruitment you mentioned? I already told you that everyone is searching for capable younglings. It is because the city lord wants to teach the best out of the next generation and soon there will be a tournament for the top 10 to go under the tutelage of him. Is he that good? Certainly there are races naturally stronger than science, but that doesn't mean they have better techniques. Indeed, but the city lord is different. He trained from the bottom up and no one in this city can top him. In case of key control. Ah, awesome. I don't need to travel all the way to earth to learn key control and I can learn from the strongest here. Besides with what I have seen, their control doesn't seem to be worse than those on earth. The city lord must be even more impressive. But first you have to win the right to represent us. You will first meet Das. I already told him about you. He's waiting on the third floor. Our training floor? Need to win the right? It seems I'm not the only choice for the science, huh? Ding. They entered the third floor. As they stepped out they were greeted by a floor which was covered with white tiles. The floor, the ground and the pillars, there were no windows. A floor entirely built to be durable. In the middle of the room a figure was sitting cross-legged with his eyes closed. They walked towards him. Hey Mr. Diz, here he is. He opened his eyes and looked at Broly. So, you are the newest one who popped up. I can already sense that you are exceptionally strong for someone your age. We will start training tomorrow at 6 in the morning. Go eat something and go to bed you had a long journey. Sure, see you tomorrow. Daz's eyelid twitched at the casual response. Eh, don't you want to introduce yourself? He's already leaving. Chapter 11. Training. The next day on the third floor three people were already gathered as Broly arrived. Two children were standing in front of Daz. A tall boy standing tall with 165 centimeters. He already looked like he was in his teens, but Broly knew only the younglings were qualified to be trained as a successor. Also, Science grew up faster to look like a 10 to 12 year old. Their growth then stops until later when they become adults. He knew that the boy should be around his age. He was not too big nor too slim for his height, but with well defined muscles, he looked like a professional athlete. He had short, spiky, Black hair similar to that of Gohan in the later parts of the series and was slightly tanned. The most that stood out was his gaze, one filled with unwavering confidence. The second candidate was a girl with long, smooth black hair tied to a ponytail. She looked more childlike than the boy next to her. She was around 140 centimeters and in contrast to the boy had a slight pale skin complexion. All in all, she looked like a 12-year-old child, if it weren't for her indifferent eyes. Both showed their absolute confidence in themselves but it wasn't without reason as both revealed a power level approaching the million. They were the most exceptional in this generation. Broly didn't think that he would be able to guarantee his victory against them, but of course he wouldn't shrink away in front of some competition. The boy was showing a curious look as Broly was approaching. Seemingly wanting to have a fight with him, he turned towards Broly. He started speaking. Broly, is it? I heard you are the most talented of the current generation, but don't think your natural talent is enough to come out of top. I, Taro will be strongest here and represent the Scion race. After saying that he turned back to Daz with a grin on his face. The girl gave him a deep glance, ignoring him shortly after, not saying anything. He went in line with the others, he stood in front of Daz. All in the same white GI were waiting for him to begin. Alright since you are all here, we will start our training. But first let me see what you're capable of. You three against me. Let's go. Without any further warnings, he started attacking. F asterisk CK. That wasn't a spar. He just beat us up. Taro lying on his back complained as he took deep breaths. He had bruises and cuts all around his body. The other two were similar exhausted. Broly was the one with the most wounds on his body. A bruised face and a bloody arm. His new white GI were already filled with holes. He didn't have real martial arts experience, 
but just used his superior physique and reflexes to be able to contend with Das. Although his wounds looked serious, they were all superficial, taking only a few hours in their healing pot to heal. The girl was the most skilled of the three. Besides being out of breath, she had no wounds to speak of. In the fight itself, she was the one who could have an exchange for an extended period time. Of course, Daz was suppressing his power to be the same as the three, but he is still an experienced fighter. It was a feed one could be proud of, but it also seemed that he dodged more when he fought against the girl. Daz watched them from the sides, especially at Broly. Although one could tell, he is a greenhorn if you look at his techniques. But his instincts and tenacity are something else. He was rapidly improving as we fought. I even had to be extra harsh to beat him down. He just didn't want to stay on the ground. With enough time in battles, who knows what heights he will achieve. All right, break time is over. Gather around. For the two of you, you already have a perfect key control. For now, you can practice on refining your techniques and meditate. As for you, Broly, I will have to teach you the basics. Taro and the girl sat down on two different spots and started meditating. One could see their key flaring up from time to time, but usually being restrained till the point their key wasn't detectable. Broly, you already know how to push out key as it comes natural to us scions, but it seems that's the only way you know how to use it. Key is not only used for key blasts, or that kind of thing, but also to push your bodily strength to new heights. One can use key to boost your speed and strength. For that you first have to train your key control, it is actually rather easy to train. Since you only know how to release it outside your body, let's start with that. Release it outside a body. For example, create a key sphere in your hands, but don't shoot it out. Just hold it in your hands for the time being, and later let it fly around your hand. That's all you got to do. Keep doing it, and increase the number of key spheres, or the speed you let it fly. If you can control it perfectly outside, you will be more sensible to your own key and can prevent it from leaking out, like those two. Practice makes perfect. Huh. Why didn't I think of that? In the cloud space my key control was also rising because I constantly used my sphere and tried to counter the hits of the clouds. Really too simple. Three days later after the three got beaten up again, Daz said that they would spar every day at the start in the pretense to solidify their foundation for the misfortune of the three. They gathered together, seemingly frustrated at Daz as he was laughing at their miseries. Taro started speaking with a clenched fist. All right, although I will be the strongest in the future, I really don't want to be beaten up every day. How about we work together? Broly rolled his eyes at Taro's proclamation, but he still clenched his fist and agreed. I agree. I want to beat Daz up. Seeing him smirk the whole time really pisses me off. What about you, mute girl? She frowned as she heard that. I'm not mute. I just don't want to be bothered with you too. Humph. Turning her head sideways. Oh geez. Oh geez. Yeah right. So, was that a no? Do you think I need both of your help? I was never hurt once. It's just that I can't get a solid hit. I just need you to distract him for me. Okay. Ahem. If you don't want to work together, then please leave. We have things to discuss. Broly said as he turned to Taro beginning to strategize their next moves. And no. I agree. Ahem. Why yes you can help me. No. Wait. Stay here. All right, we work together. I'm sorry. Please, don't ignore me. Wow, and here I thought. She would be an ice queen. She is still a child after all. Broly, I think we have better chances with her. She's still the strongest of us. As of now, that is. I will be stronger in no time. After I dash. Yes. Yes. All right, mute girl, come let's think of a plan. My name is not mute girl. It's Aaliyah. I'm the daughter of Daz and will become the leader of the science. Daz's daughter? No wonder she doesn't get beaten up. Both boys thought. Okay, my turn. I am Taro the soon to be the strongest scion of all time. Stronger than Daz, stronger than Dash. Thought. What did I expect? They just rolled their eyes before Aaliyah diverted the attention to Broly. We get it. All right, what about you? I am Broly, the legendary super scion. Chapter 12, Sparring Session. What is a super scion? Taro asked confused as he saw Aaliyah's dumbfounded face. Eh? What do you mean, what is a super scion? The scion of legend, of course. You know, a scion born with incredible strength. His natural talent far surpassing his peers. Broly answered matter-of-factly. But you aren't, though? In fact, we are even stronger than you are. Cough. Yes, that's because you train longer than I have. With the high gravity and you being taught how to train your key, gave you an edge. Nodding to himself as he explained. Didn't you just a scion that was born stronger than others? You didn't mention you have to train to be stronger. No, I said born with great strength and having the natural talent allowing to be stronger than Dash. Stop. All right, we get it. You super scion, can we discuss our plan, please? After Aaliyah snapped out of her daze, she interrupted the two, being fed up with their wild proclamations, completely forgetting saying that she wanted to rule their whole race. For the next month, after every spar, 
Broly could be seen sitting cross-legged with green pearl-sized energy spheres flying between his fingers. At the beginning he was struggling to do so, even to juggle one was difficult for him, but over time he got more proficient, until he added a new sphere, starting to struggle anew. This went on for three weeks until he could control four spheres in each hand, making them fly at an incredible speed. As a great surprise for the rest, as even Aaliyah, a prodigy, needed half a year to be on the same level. This practice tempered his control at a rapid pace, and with it he attained greater strength. While he was showcasing a tremendous amount of ki, he couldn't make use of it all, which was reflected in his scanned power level. It became clear that even though all three seemingly had the same amount of power level, it was only because Taro and Aaliyah could already draw out all their ki. But with the technique called Power Up, he too was able to move most of his ki, demonstrating his current full power. It took a whole month for him to be capable of using close to all his ki. It gave him an advantage against Taro and Aaliyah, since his natural reserve was a lot higher than theirs. He not only bridged the gap, but also overtook them in raw power. In the end of the first month, he was already twice as strong, and his battle awareness increased speedily as well. Jain also brought him a fruit of life for him to eat, but he put it on hold for now. He realized while training, that even though his key control was increasing, it wasn't perfect. It also took the tree three weeks to grow one fruit. Although Scions got preferred if they want to exchange for a fruit, that didn't mean they always get it first. So instead of using it now and potentially wasting some of the energy, he wanted to wait until he could fully make use of it. Of course, Broly wasn't the only one to make progress. Although it wasn't as exaggerated as Broly's improvement, Taro and Aaliyah were still top-class talents. Being immensely pressured by Broly's talent, they surpassed their limits quickly. Seeking new battle experience, instead of only sparring with Daz, they wanted to fight each other. Positioned in a triangle, they faced each other. Taro and Aaliyah taking on their battle stances. Broly seemingly unfazed with his arms crossed and his left foot slightly in front of his right, as if he's watching a show. Taro and Aaliyah started charging at each other, exchanging wild blows. The wind whistles with each blow and the ground started trembling. If it were a normal floor, it would have already crumbled apart. Both disappeared from Broly's view before reappearing on both his sides. Taro kicking at his feet from the left, Aaliyah chopping at his neck from the right. Before the blows landed, Broly leans forward avoiding the chop, jumping slightly to avoid the kick. In the air he started rotating, responding with a kick on his own, straight in Taro's face, sending him flying against the wall. With Broly's right backhand he smacked Aaliyah across the floor, before landing again. Back in his starting stance, he looked at the two. Taro bounced of the wall. A small dent was formed. He crawled back to his feet. Seriously? A monster? Only a month has passed, and he already toys with us. Taro complained as blood dripped out of his mouth. He again went into battle stance, as did Aaliyah. Hee hee, isn't that good for you two? You can fight someone who is stronger. You will only improve at an even faster pace. Ha ha ha, Broly dropped the pretense. You only enjoy not being at the receiving end. Aaliyah shouted out, frustrated at the fact that someone a year younger than her, bested her. Ahem. No. Now stop complaining and let's fight. He screamed as he charged at Aaliyah, trying to grab her head, but she blocked it with a key blast. Cough. Hey. I thought key blasts weren't allowed. Before the dust settled, a figure jumped through it and delivered a kick to Broly's head, barely blocking it with his arm, sliding across the floor. Oh ho. So, we play like that. Broly now serious, bringing out everything got. A green aura appeared around him. As he looked at the two in front of him, he saw them doing the same. Two against one. They dashed towards each other, turning into blurs. Seconds later loud explosions sounded out in the floor every time they clashed. Key blast flying about. The air started to vibrate because of the high energy concentration, their movements too fast to follow with one's eyes, repeatedly appearing for a moment few hundreds of meters apart before charging at each other again. After half an hour, the elevator door opened, Des stepping inside the training floor as he saw the destruction. What the f asterisk ck happened here? Ah, uh, hey Des, poo, we just had a small spar. Broly answered exhaustedly. He was the only one who could answer, the other two were grasping for air on the ground with their eyes closed. Small spar? I see. A vein popped out on his forehead. You surely didn't use any key blast, right? Oh no, he's speaking through his teeth. He's seriously pissed again. Ha ha ha. Of course, we did not. You dare lie into my face with your obvious fake laugh. Come here, you little sage asterisk T. I'm sorry. But this is the only place we can train. You little brat. As if this is the only place. Why do you think you guys are always the only one here in a building full of science? There are plenty of training areas outside. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Then we won't use key blast in here anymore. Good. Now come here. Let me beat you up. As he said that he slowly walked towards Broly, cracking his knuckles. New. I'm sorry. 
I didn't even start using blast. Ouch. Why? Act. Why only me? Ah. Uh. Chapter 13. Representatives. Two days before the tournament starts, the trio, Daz, and an audience, consisting of their fellow scions, were currently outside, in front of a slightly elevated podium with a scanner in the center. Daz started speaking loudly. All right, fellow scions. In two days, the tournament will take place, and today we will decide who of you will represent the scion race. All three with an unusual solemn face listening to Daz, all filled with determination in their eyes. To be able to become the disciple of the city lord was a rare opportunity after all, and this will be the first hurdle. Since we always have respected the one with the highest battle power, the highest five shall be our representatives. All of the scions age below nine, come up, and let's test your full power. You all know the procedure. Wait, that's it? I thought we would have to fight for it? And five people isn't that too many? Whatever at least I get to see how strong the new generation is. There are about 50 children here. Since they are all born on this planet, they should be considerably strong. Hmm. Broly raised his arm. Why do we have to be under nine years old? That's the age limit the city lord gave. Ah. Uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about being too old. Since you crossed a time-space rift, you are as old as you were when you entered it. Daz took out a list and started to call out names. A dry. Come on up. Beep. Suppressed. 21.636. Full power. 163.290. The audience started clapping. Not bad. By the reaction of the audience, it seemed to be a rather average level though. A's. Beep. Suppressed. 146. Full power. 853.732. OSH asterisk T? That one is strong. I thought Taro and Aaliyah were exceptions among Scions, but damn, it's only the second one. Aaliyah who stood beside Broly, saw his surprised look, and decided to introduce A's to him. That one is A's, six years old. Son of Micah, the head of food distribution. He is one of the top elites of our generation. He usually trains by himself and asks adults from the guards to spar with him. Beep. Suppressed. 10.734. Full power. 290.420. So, he didn't want to train with us? What a shame. Would have been interesting to fight three at the same time. Aaliyah just rolled her eyes. To be trained under Daz, you had to have a power level above a million. Only we three were above the minimum. Taro only barely fit the bill. Aze wanted to but couldn't. He improved quite a bit. But I wonder what my power level will be. Da. Aaliyah coming. She stepped inside and beep. Suppressed. 5. Full power. 1.689.491. Hoo hoo. That's my girl. Silence. Dad. Just call out the next one. Deeply blushing, she ran down back besides to Broly, who was holding his stomach, trying not to laugh. That's not funny. She whisper shouted at him while pinching him. No, it is not. It's hilarious. Ha ha ha. Soon one by one they went up. Broly. Beep. Suppressed. 158. Full power, 2.573.254. The audience shortly fell in silence before erupting in loud cheers. Since they came to this planet, they were usually the weaker ones, hence their exhilaration when one of the next generation was exceptional. Kana. Beep. Suppressed. 12.154. Full power, 752.463. And who's that? Kana. Daughter of a low-class warrior. She's eight years old and the last child who came from our old planet. Well, the last until you came. Another survivor. Huh. Broly looked at her. She had shoulder-long, smooth red hair, very uncharacteristic for Scions. She was around 150 centimeters tall, and like all Scions, she had a fit body. She seemed to sense his glance since she turned to him, gave him a nod, and went back to her spot. Taro. Beep. Suppressed. 6. Full power. 1.437.288. The rest of this generation hovered around 200,000. It is impressive considering that most of the previous generation didn't even make it to the 10,000 mark. All right, I now announce the top five who will represent us. At the fifth place, Kana with a power level of 752,000. Ahead of her is Aze at the fourth place with 853,000. On the third place, Taro with an astonishing 1.4 million. Silver goes to the adorable Aaliyah. Not only is she cute, but has an enormous strength of 1.7 million. And first is Broly, someone who came out of nowhere, stealing the place from Aaliyah with a frightening 2.5 million. Des you should really quit your job as the head of defense and become an announcer. F me. At least the crowd played their role and got riled up. There are even some who are staring daggers at me. Great. Pooh. Wasn't that exciting? Des said with an expectant look. He was even out of breath. No. All right, for the next two days you should meditate and use the time to rest. Resting is also part of the training after all. But before you can relax, I'm going to tell you the rules for the tournament. The most important rule, killing is forbidden. Anyone who comes into contact outside the ring, and those who give up, automatically loses. 
as well as those who got knocked down and can't get up within 10 seconds. If both contestants get knocked down the first to get up and states, I am the winner, wins. You can't wear armor or weapons. Besides that, everything goes. Now go and rest. See you in two days. Ah. Uh, finally, it's over. Before Broly could leave, a voice sounded out next to him. Hello, Broly. I'm Aze, nice to meet you. Same here, Broly answered in a daze, while grasping the outstretched hand. Aze then turned to Aaliyah and Taro, and greeted them in the same matter. Wow how polite. While Taro made his proclamations of becoming the strongest again, Kana approached as well. She gave of a mature vibe and her voice was pleasing to the ear. Hello, it seems we are in the same boat now. She gave a smile also outstretching her hand for a handshake. Hey, I'm the one from Earth. Why am I surprised that they want to shake hands? Yes, nice to meet you. The warrior race. Why can't they say something normal, like, I'm a super elite. How could I be weaker than you? Ah, uh, whatever. I just look at them as exceptions. Chapter 14, Group Stage The top five Scions and Daz went together to register for the tournament. Daz was being assigned as their coach. Obviously, almost all Scions went to the tournament waiting for the fights to begin. The crowd was already massive, since it was a never-seen event for the inhabitants and the Scions after all, to test their capable younglings with the other races and gain strength and status. There were 10 races, with everyone sending five candidates, so in total 50 participants glaring for the top 10. The tournament started out with all the candidates splitting in 10 groups of five. Everyone would battle against each other and the first two with the highest number of wins got to move to the next round. To decide in which group one got, everyone had to draw their group number from a box. Taro got the number for group two, Broly for three, Kana and Aaliyah got into group six and A's was an eight. Good luck. Don't you dare lose. It would be embarrassing if the companions of the legendary Super Scion would be eliminated. Taro and Aaliyah just ignored him. A's was being dumbfounded for a moment but seeing the other two, he just smiled and shook his head. Kana had the most exaggerated expression. She grabbed the shoulders of Broly looked him in the eyes. Can you teach me? I want to be a super scion. She firmly looked in his eyes as she waited expectantly. Cough. Sure. But only if you become a disciple of the city lord. Make sure you win. Thank you. I do my best. What's up with her? After shaking Kana off, Broly looked around to see how his future opponents looked like. Most prominent were the Myrmidons, not shying away to show their power wanting to intimidate the others. Broly, however, just got more excited as he saw them. He was also surprised as all of them were standing tall with at least 170 centimeters in height. They were all children after all. They had four arms and smooth reddish skin like it was made from metal. Harpies who looked like normal human women if it weren't for the wings on their back. The succubi could not be overseen. Tan females with gold stripes on their bodies and horns on their head. They attracted the gazes of the surroundings with their innate allure, which was a bit weird for Broly. Other countries other manners. Geth. Wolf-like people, similar to the wolf king, Broly killed in the forest. Two meter tall trolls with brown fur, protruding jaw and large fangs, rather menacing to look at. Even Dracos, dragon-like people, took part in this tournament. Even though they looked like ruthless beasts, their eyes gave an intellectual impression. There were other races with different skin color or particular body structure, but they didn't leave Broly with any impression. After an hour of wait, the participants were already gathered at their chosen group, the announcer started shouting through a microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, we apologize for the long wait. We now convene the first worldwide recruitment tournament. And so, to begin with, we will hear a word of welcome from the city lord. After he said that a humanoid figure appeared on the seat isolated from the crowd. He had bluish skin and eyes, short orange hair and pointy ears. Although his body looked strong and in great shape, he seemed to be very sickly. All of you here, today, we hold a tournament to receive my legacy and to create a brighter future. To those of you who are fighting, as well as those supporting you from the audience, good luck and have fun. Thank you very much. Now then, allow me to explain the rules. There are 10 stages. Every group go to the arena with your group on it. As the announcer said that the arena divided itself, with a 20 meter of distance to each other. No wonder the stadium is this massive. They can divide this stage into 10 portions. Probably only those who can get out of the group stage are qualified to fight on the whole arena. Hee <laughs> hee. Can't wait to see how strong my opponents are thought Broly as he looked towards the other four fighters. Although that didn't give off any strong aura but key suppressing is nothing uncommon on this planet. As he was observing him, they also checked Broly out. Hey, tell me from what race you are? I saw you with the Scions. Did they adopt you or something? A Myrmidon from Broly's group approached him. Hmm? I'm obviously a Scion. Don't you have eyes? Look my tail. Answered as he unwrapped his tail from his waist. A tail? Hmph. That's why I'm asking, you dumb asteriskus. Since when do Scions have tails? He was rather hostile to Broly, 
but that was not what Broly focused on from this conversation. Eh. Broly looked at Aaliyah, Taro, Daz, and all the other scions. Tide, why don't they have tails? Aaliyah, Taro, and Aze, I may be able to blame the new planet or the rift for messing with the gene pool or something, but Jine and the other survivors must have tails, don't they? Maybe they removed it? A weakness is still a weakness after all. Although you can train the tail, it will never be as strong as your legs. Maybe they didn't want to turn into a great ape? It would be havoc, since most were low-class warrior? Got to ask Daz or Jine later. A Draco chimed in, trying to calm the Myrmidon down. It was known to all that those the Scions and the Myrmidons had some conflict in the past. Either way it is still a tournament for all races, so there is no reason to create any enmities. Broly and the Myrmidon ignored him as they looked at each other. Well I'm a Scion with a tail. Yeah right, if you want to be like them, I, Zyrd, am gonna crush you like I would a real Scion. Broly's eyes narrowed. A real Scion, huh? I will show you what a real Scion is. Group 2. First fight. Broly from the Scions versus Zyrd from the Myrmidon. Ha ha ha. Seems we don't have to wait long for our battle. I will make you beg me for mercy. Broly gave him a smile. You took the words right out of my mouth. 3. Chapter 15. Battle. Broly and Zyrd were facing each other on their stage. Zyrd was taller than Broly with 180 centimeters. He just looked at him with a sneer on his face. Tension was building, both just waiting for their referee to start the battle. Fight. Without waiting, Zyrd dashed towards Broly. Even though he was big, he was by no means slow, giving Broly two right hooks at different heights with his two right arms. Broly just evaded both by taking a step back. Pursuing him, Zyrd let off dozens of punches, but no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't reach his opponent. He jumped back and raised all four of his arms. Take this. Ah. For red beams of light shot through the air landing right where Broly stood. The arena where he shot his key blast exploded into pieces, but after the dust settled nobody could be found. A voice sounded behind Zyrd. A battle power of around 700,000, I suppose? Turning around he saw the scion with his mocking gaze. He quickly threw a punch with all his weight in it, but Broly just caught it with his palm. Zyrd panicked and jumped away creating distance between the two. Suddenly a Myrmidon shouted out from outside the arena, his coach. Go Zyrd. Crush him. Show this monkey what hidden power slumbers within our race. For a moment Zyrd was stunned, but quickly a smile formed. Broly, I have to admit that you are not bad, but you will not be able to beat me. I wanted to reserve this move for the later rounds, but I give you the chance to be beaten by it. Hiya. Zyrd's body began to shrink and a red aura diffused from his body as he was screaming. His arms on one side started to merge with each other, and his red skin began to shine red. Now 160 centimeters, standing as tall as Broly. He had a smug expression on his face, sure of his victory. How do you like my form? Ha ha ha. I'm twice as strong as I were before. Now you are just an ant. I can easily crush. As a response, Broly's green key slowly flowed out of his body, now covering him, blazing fiercely. So, you are all talk and no action. What a waste of my time. Broly disappeared from his spot, instantly reappearing in front of Zyrd, grabbing his head with one hand. As he struck Zyrd's stomach dozens of times with his other, Zyrd was forced to stay in place by the hand, firmly holding onto his head. Barely holding onto his conscious, his knees gave in, his legs already slumping down on the ground. Broly raised Zyrd's head in front of his own and gave a friendly smile, but for Zyrd, it was terrifying. Evil D. He's going to kill me. He's serious. He will kill me. Referee do something. PL please spar dash. Before he could finish his sentence, he vomited all over the floor. Broly sensing what was about to happen. Let go of Zyrd and let him lie in his own vomit. Ha ha ha. So that is the power that slumbers within you. Pretty disgusting if you ask me. Shaking his head before he continued. What a mess you made. But don't worry I help you clean up. Broly raised his hand and a basketball sized sphere formed in front of his palm. You don't have to thank me. Ah. It shot out creating a beautiful arc. The sphere landed just in front of Zyrd. Boom. The explosion sent Zyrd outside the ring while destroying the area of the stain in the process. After his victory was declared, Broly walked off the stage. The Myrmidons fuming in rage, while the Scions had big smiles on their faces. After checking on the now unconscious Myrmidon the Draco approached him with furrowed brows. That was too cruel. You are obviously way stronger. There was no need to humiliate him. He won't even be able to participate in the next fights. Too cruel? I only hit him a few times and he still lives, doesn't he? DP asterisk said me off and paid the price. Besides rather than complaining, shouldn't you be thanking me? Less competition and all. Maybe now you can become second place. Hehe. <laughs> Why you? Forget it. 
With a grim expression he left. The Scions were ecstatic at the outcome. Broly, their number one, completely decimated his opponent, showing his competence. Taro also won his battle with ease. The only candidates they were waiting for were Kana and Aaliyah who are now facing off against each other. Ace still hasn't had his fight yet, so they all focused on the girls' first battle. After they completely exhausted the one-minute limit in the group stages, Aaliyah came out on top. Her power level was over two times higher than hers after all. For Kana to move on she would have to win against all other candidates, which wasn't in favor for her, since another Myrmidon was in her group and he was only slightly weaker than ZYRD. If all Myrmidons are able to use the ability ZYRD showed in his battle, her prospects weren't great. Aes had better chances, except for a Draco and a Troll, who looked fairly strong. After checking out the results of his fellow Scions, he went satisfied onto the stage for his next battle against a Succubi. As the usual battle tactic of Succubi, she tried to seduce him with her innate allure, but he had built a high resistance to mental attacks since the ordeal with his soul and the fact that she was still a child, made her attacks on Broly ineffective. His next fight against a green-skinned boy was unspectacular as well, with a battle power of around 600,000, there was not much he could do against Broly. Most attacks weren't even strong enough to bring Broly to dodge. He just grabbed his face and threw him off stage. For the others, their fight went pretty well too, with the exception of A's, as he lost against a troll. They had thick fur and skin, allowing the troll to ignore his defenses and going all offensive. He had to win against the Draco if he doesn't want to be disqualified. Taro had no strong opponents, so he basically wiped the floor with the competition. Aaliyah just barely won against the Myrmidon in their team, which was now Kana's next opponent. The odds were against her, but Broly couldn't help but feel that she would come out victoriously. Broly, Taro, and Aaliyah are already guaranteed to move to the next round. Kana's next opponent is very strong. Will she be able to win and move to the next round? Find out in the next chapter of Broly the Scion of Legend.